Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we need to weigh this guy. Is this the one you yes. turned out? Yes, it is. Nice. So this is 12.9 kilograms. It's actually, we're just going to call it 13 kilograms. We're going to keep this on salt at least two days for every kilogram. So if you can do some quick math, it's at least 26 days. Um, and it's a pretty thick ham, so I might say to go... Give it a month. <laughs> yeah, give it a month. So we don't do equilibrium on this for a couple reasons. At our, where we do it and when we do it, people don't usually have bags big enough <laughs> to hold something like this. Though we have tried saran wrap, salt, <coughs> you know, but that usually doesn't ever work. <laughs> Get stripped. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we usually use a bus tub, identical to this one. Uh, with a lot of salt, and we call this a, our modified salt box method. In Italy, they would have a, um, I say this, but it's always different where we go, especially in Italy even, because every town has their own yeah. form of this. Um, so this is just the Ohio version of what we think prosciutto is. Um, but they would have like a salt box, a wooden box, it's made that Al, Al will probably make before next time. <laughs> that will hold his ham. And usually there's like a little sideboard, you know, so if you imagine there's a rectangle around here, they'll put a little sideboard right here because they don't want to fill that space with salt. And they'll put a layer of salt, they'll put this ham in, and then they will literally cover it with salt so you can't see the ham anymore. That uses a lot of salt. <laughs> Does the salt get soggy and wet? Uh, yeah, but it sort of... Yes, but not entirely. With that much salt, it, there's not even that much moisture in it. Uh, but here you will see it. So in just a minute, we're going to put salt on the bottom. We're going to put this ham in, and we're going to cover it with salt. And we're going to pack salt in and around all the crevices so that there's salt everywhere. Up here, you don't have to worry as much, but sometimes we'll throw some salt up here. And it will pull out moisture. Like, if you put salt here, this skin will rehydrate because it's pulling moisture through the skin. And usually we have cuts here. Thanks to Dennis. There's Dennis. He had to run out for oh, a minute. Okay. But thanks to Dennis's gambrel, uh, we didn't cut here, so we don't have to salt. Because usually when we do, we have to pack this with salt, and then we wrap it. With, that's where we wrap with saran wrap, so the salt stays on that part. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and then we'll leave it in here, and it's going to have to be in your fridge for about a month. Now, if it were cold enough outside, and you could put it in a place like a root cellar, where it's cold enough for long enough, it doesn't have to go in your fridge. Under 40. Again, yeah, under 40. We've heard of people that have done it above 40, like with a lot of salt, like on the basement of their root cellar. You know, the root cellar might be 50 degrees and they put it back in the back corner. And then after that time, Al will take it out and he will rinse it. This one has to be rinsed because you can over salt, but, um, but with time, the salt sort of mellows. And then I usually recommend like a, a rinsing with a red or white wine for a lot of the acidity. And then he'll hang it up somewhere. Above the TV? Yeah, above the TV. <laughs> yeah. Above the bed. Yeah, you can mount it right above the bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, then, um, and then he'll let it hang probably for, I would say, about another month. And it always kind of depends is where it's a little bit more of the art part of it. But he would let the face of this meat dry out a little bit for a little bit of time. And then he'll text me in like a month or two and he'll say, now what am I supposed to do? And I'll say, you need to get some of your lard that you rendered. Um, and you're going to get some rice flour and a bunch of black pepper. And you're going to mix that all together and make a paste. And you'll smear that paste all around here. And you'll leave the bone exposed, just for safety's sake. And so what that does is in the summertime, when bugs come back out, the black pepper is not something those bugs are interested in at all. And it'll keep bugs away from the surface of the meat, and it'll help the drying uh, sort of equalize, because this will dry out way, way, way faster than back there. Because it's going to be a long drying time. And it allows for it to be slow, and so this won't get crusted over and do what I was talking about with the Capricola. How long is the, dry, the drying after the... Uh after the uh, rice flour and pepper. Years? Minimum. Yeah, 12 months. Minimum. Ideally, two to three years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a commitment. 
Um, but when you eat it, yeah. you'll say, oh, I wish I would have done about four more of these. Yeah. And this will flatten out too. Like there's a lot of moisture in here that's going to come out and dry over time. So they end up, if you've seen prosciuttos, yeah. they're, they're like, they're not flat, but they're a lot flatter than it is now. I mean, it'll be down to like this level up here. Mm -hmm. What's the ideal temperature to hang it at once you get to that specific? Well, that changes traditionally because the seasons change. So they cure it now. They leave it on cure over the winter. Early spring, they take it out and hang it up which is perfect, and I was telling some people, it's perfect depending on where you live, but where this was traditionally done. <coughs> Early spring is still cold, but it's wet. So that keeps this from drying out too fast. And then after you get through spring and you start going into summer, that's when they would put on the sunya, that mixture. And then it would go through temperature fluctuations in the summer, which are actually good for the flavor development. And then it would go back in, so it, it cycles, the temperature fluctuations are actually good for it. Um, humidity is nice early on especially, um, to keep a, a higher humidity, like 75-ish percent. But it's not, it doesn't have to, you don't have to be that technical about it. But if you want to, you could, basically. Oh yeah, you can be way more technical than I'm being, <laughs> yeah. In yeah. that year's time, there, what I was saying, do you have to do anything to it? Let's take pictures of it. Yeah, no, admire it. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't, no, you, don't have to, you don't have to add any more or anything, just that's no. it. Yeah, it's crazy. You so, don't want iodized. So you don't, it doesn't yeah. need to be very good salt then. No, but traditionally it was. Ideally, you, I, yeah. if, if you had And Al's going to have to check on this because the water will leach out of this and take the salt with it. Yeah. And it'll, he'll have a pool of water down here. Right. Brine. So that's why I was asking about, it. Is it, does it get soupy and wet? Yeah, so well in that case, in a salt box, not as much because you don't actually ever see the bottom and the salt kind of... So it, can you reuse forward. your salt box? With the salt in the salt box, the next one, or is it all fine? I usually use it for other things, like out on the driveway when it's... Yeah. I see. Or like to salt rabbit pelts, like sometimes I'll save rabbit pelts, I'll use it for stuff so like that. So you're using a plastic... I won't use it for food again, but you probably could. You're using a plastic tub now. What's what's wrong with you, if you, assuming you had a refrigerator big enough, could you not use a plastic tote? So you could bury, you know, like a... with a lid and make your own plastic sure. box and put... I've seen people use coolers, and if they keep it in a spot that's cold enough, they can just put the whole hand down in there. Or those um, cement mixing trays yep. would almost be big enough to hold one of these. Yeah, it's just... We have a bunch of these, and that's what we've used, and so far they've worked just fine. I'm putting it mostly over in that corner, and this is just because this is the way we do it. One more time here. Now, I will say, and you'll try a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to do this part, Gina? You want me to do that? Sure. What do you want me to do? Yeah. Just pour this in over Does top of the meat, and you're going to have to like shove salt in everywhere, especially around this bone and up here where that uh, femoral artery is. Okay. But you're just going to pack it in everywhere. So just dump it on or like put it on there? Well, here, you can just start packing it in all those places. Can you say right here? Yep. Just everywhere. If there's a crack or a crevice or a hole anywhere, just pack it with salt. <laughs> Up under the skin a little bit, or um, not as much under it. Like I said, I'll put some up here, um, and that's it. That's prosciutto. Hmm. I found a ten-pound bag at Home Goods of all places, and it was like three bucks. Yeah, it's yeah. good. <laughs> I'm just going to finish that bag off. Keep this bag in here and check it, yep. especially early on. Like when it's really, we'll put it somewhere in here and you'll see the moisture wicking. Yeah, it comes out quickly, especially early. You, he'll check it because water will be leaching out of it, and he'll like if he doesn't check it until tomorrow morning, you'll see meat here. And then it's just a matter of pulling up salt that's down here. Gene will be checking it two, three, four, five times a day. Yeah. <laughs> What's my what you doing? See, you're already getting attached to it. That's good. <laughs>